What's up guys? So this is a very fun video because today we're going to be going over the biggest health news stories. And the reason I do this is because every week I actually host a room uh, and it's quite popular on Clubhouse where we go over the biggest news in science over the last week. And it's actually been really cool because it helps me summarize what's going on and what isn't. And so today I want to kind of walk you guys through that because there's been a lot of big news in health that I want to make sure every one of us knows about. Um, so with that being said, just for anyone who doesn't know me already, my name is Prerak Juthani. I'm an MD, MBA student. I'm going to be graduating um, from BO in 2022. Um, I, I did my undergrad at UC Berkeley. I have a lot of interests here. Uh, but one thing that I did want to point out for all you homies who have been watching me from day one, I did start a Skillshare course um, that's kind of a accumulation of some of the productivity tips uh, that I put out on my channel, as well as just different insights that I've had. So if you want to check that out, I'm going to link that in the description below, as well as most of the stories that we're going to talk about today, those will also be linked in the description below. Uh, and so without any further ado, I want to make sure you understand that if you are watching this video right as it comes out, you're actually just in time because we are also going to host a room today on Clubhouse at 6 p.m. Eastern time um, in the United States uh, and then also tomorrow at 10 p.m. Eastern just because there's been a lot going on in health and it's important that we all know and understand um, these these things because they have consequences, especially in the middle of a pandemic. So it's time to get my glasses on because um, we're not messing around anymore. I'm, you're going to see Nerdy Prerac now because I'm going to talk you through the biggest stories of the last week. This is a New England Journal article, and I know this sounds dull, but this has rocked the medical community and the science community. So you all should know about it primarily because this is about CRISPR-Cas9, which is a gene editing technique uh, for which um, one of my Berkeley uh, professors was given the Nobel Prize. This is particularly fascinating because what they used is that they used this CRISPR-Cas9 technology to edit the human genome for individuals who have this disease called transthyretin amyloidosis. You don't need to know much about the disease, but you do need to know that it's caused by a genetic mutation. If you can edit out um, ge the genetic mutation, which is what gene editing is, it allows you to change the genetic DNA. And so if you can edit out that, um, that gene in certain cells that have that affected gene that's causing the disease, you can actually help these individuals because you would actually decrease the amount of protein that you're making that's leading to disease. And this was a monumental study because up till now, CRISPR-Cas9 has primarily been used to edit genomes in mice and maybe even um, ex, uh, ex vivo and in vitro, so that's happening in cells. This is the first time it actually was used for a disease, uh, as far as I know, and, it, and it's been monumental because as if you read the abstract, you'll see that it actually caused a decrease in the amount of um, the, the dysfunctional protein. This is not the only thing. CRISPR-Cas9 has now slowly started being used for a bunch of other diseases that have genetic underpinnings. So some of you may know sickle cell disease. Sickle cell disease is a genetic disease that's caused by a mutation. And again, here CRISPR can have uh, a positive effect because if you can edit that gene, if you can tinker it, you actually can literally rewrite the human genome so that these individuals who have this dysfunctional protein uh, will not have it anymore. And that's monumental. This was a huge discovery. It got the Nobel Prize last year. Uh, the person who the Nobel Prize was given to is Jennifer Doudna, with whom I have a picture right here because I actually am her biggest fan, not to mention she was also my biology professor. Point being, up until now, CRISPR was this thing that we knew had enormous potential, but this is the first time we're actually starting to see it be used uh, for crazy things, and I think this is very exciting. We're going to have to cross and think about these issues uh, very, very strategically because, you know, there are a lot of ethical issues here as well. And again, everything I'm telling you is just my perspective, my opinion. None of this is medical advice, but I think it's very inspiring, and I also think this has the potential to um, help the lives of a lot of people. But again, where do you draw the line, right? Like, where do you draw the line? Because there's a lot of ethical things. What if you want your baby to have a certain color eye? Um, if you wanted that, is it is it like, is it ethical to edit human genomes in that way? Um, so there's a lot of questions here, and I'm sure this topic will come up again um, in our clubhouse room today. So I'm looking forward to it, but this was actually a really good news uh, um, article because I feel like we're just so inundated with craziness that this was like, I was like, ooh, this is this is some good stuff, all right? So the second one, second news article that we're moving on to now, 
This is big, okay? It's the Wuhan lab hypothesis. And I don't know if you guys have been following the news. This has been taking uh, the news by storm in every sense of the word because now Biden has, Bi President Biden has actually even put together a task force to actually figure out where did the COVID-19 virus start from. And I'm going to link this video in the description below. Feel free to watch it. But it is not um, unremarkable to assume it could have been a lab leak. There is nothing to point to that direction yet, but we are investigating that as a hypothesis because we still don't entirely know where this virus came from. It could also have come from nature. I want you all to understand that these are not necessarily mutually exclusive. A lab leak plus nature, because it's very um, likely that someone was studying some sort of coronavirus. Um, and that coronavirus could have been something very similar to the current COVID-19 virus. That coronavirus could have been found in nature, and then as they were studying it, it could have transformed. Again, I'm not saying that this is what happened. I'm just saying that the Wuhan lab hypothesis and the fact that this virus could have developed in nature, um, for some reason, the news has made it seem like those are two opposite ends, ends of the spectrum. I just want everyone to know that no, that's not necessarily true. They, they're not necessarily mutually exclusive because something that's found in nature, we investigate all the time as scientists. And as we investigate it, it's very uh, possible that we can change it. Um, and then if that leaks out, of course, there can be um, the consequences. So check this video out. It's definitely something that's ongoing uh, and it's a news article almost every day. So if you guys see any interesting updates on this, feel free to comment below because I would love to know and I'll definitely talk about it in the future. The third story, and I know this is the one that most of you have been waiting for, the Delta variant. There are so many news on this. I have to put my glasses back on because this is a big deal, guys, a huge deal. What is the Delta variant? It is the same well, it's not the same SARS-CoV-2 virus because the genetic um, underpinning of this virus has changed. And it's changed in a way that makes this virus more transmissible. The previous um, coronavirus variant was called the alpha variant. The delta variant is just the alpha variant with several aspects of its genome changed that allows this delta variant to be about almost 50% more transmissible amongst people. So if you assume coronavirus was, let's say, um, one person could give coronavirus to at least three other people if they were infected. This this new variant, one person can give it to potentially, you know, 4.5 people, right? Uh, and this is just the aspect of increased transmissibility. I want to make sure you also understand what we don't know yet. We don't know if this Delta variant causes a more severe uh, COVID-19 uh, illness. We just know that it's more transmissible. And that's one of the reasons why people have been on high alert. Okay. Some other updates are that Germany just today issued a huge recommendation for mixing COVID-19 vaccines because based on what they were saying, they said people who received the first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine may need to have a booster with one of the mRNA vaccines. That's Pfizer or Moderna. Those are the two mRNA vaccines. And that was Germany's recommendation. I would not be surprised if that recommendation then followed suit in the United States for the Johnson & Johnson vaccine because the Johnson & Johnson vaccine was not an mRNA vaccine. And so it may be possible based on the data that starts emerging that people may be asked to um, to get um, a booster with the, uh, with the mRNA vaccines. And the other thing I want to talk about that kind of falls in line with this is a prominent physician on Twitter who tweeted this out. So I want to make sure everyone can see it. You can see that the vaccine efficacy against symptomatic COVID, uh, the Pfizer, which is an mRNA vaccine, you can see that there were studies on this. It was about 88 to 83% effective against the Delta variant in terms of symptomatic COVID. That's usually people who come in to the hospital and they, their oxygen saturation is below 94, 93%. They actually have symptoms from COVID. So it was about 83 and 88% effective. Again, compared to the Alpha variant, it's a bit less, but it's still quite good. And now you compare it to the AstraZeneca vaccine, you can see that it's not nearly as strong, 61 and 60%. So you can see why they're substantiating this aspect of um, making sure someone gets an mRNA vaccine for a booster because it seems like the mRNA vaccine may be a little better. The last part of this story that's actually super interesting is that the World Health Organization has recommended that even vaccinated people continue to keep their masks on. On the other hand, the CDC has said that if you're vaccinated, you can take your masks off. I actually can find a reason why both of those recommendations are true because the World Health Organization is looking at everything from the world's perspective, right? When you look at the world's perspective, um, we're lucky in the United States because most of us, at least 70%, I believe, have gotten at least one dose of a vaccine. 
So that's pretty good. But in terms of the world, there are lots of other countries where there isn't that much of vaccine uptake. So even if you're vaccinated, the chances of you becoming, um, you know, potentially an asymptomatic carrier is much higher because the overall vaccination rates across the world are not nearly as high as they are in the United States. And so it kind of makes sense why these two agencies are giving different recommendations. We'll just have to see um, if the CDC will go backwards and, and follow the World Health Organization or vice versa. The last story, of course, I, I, I want to make sure we talk a little bit about pop culture as well. Britney Spears has been in the news recently primarily because she has a conservator. Uh, and there's been a lot of um, aspects of conservatorship that people may not know about. A conservator is usually appointed in a medical situation when it feels like someone is not able to make decisions that are in their best interest. I don't even know much about this story. I will link it in the description below. But the problem is when you have a conservator, a lot of big decisions then go to the conservator instead of to the person for whom the conservator is appointed. So in this case, Britney Spears' father is the conservator, and I believe she has an IUD in, and the father does not want it taken out, and I think Britney Spears uh, does. And so there's this very um, internal and, and very heavy conflict that's existing right now. This story is still developing. But I wanted to point it out because I wanted you to realize that medicine and even the news goes beyond just um, purely, you know, coronavirus. There's a lot of complex issues in the medical system, and in this case, I personally, um, I feel, I feel for um, uh, Britney Spears. It's actually insane because she's actually been very prolific in the last few years, and the fact that she has a conservator, I didn't, I didn't actually even know that. So. If you guys have any updates on any of these news, drop a comment, let me know. I will more than be happy to talk about them. And if you're watching this video before 6 p.m. Eastern, feel free to click on the link below to join Clubhouse uh, and, and drop in on this chat because we're always talking about really exciting stuff. So with that being said, if you guys enjoyed this video, drop a like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. All right, peace.